Uh, this afternoon's panel is entitled Developing a Media Management System Strategy. My name is Mike Newman. Uh, I'm the VP and GM for the Video Content Management Business Unit at Polycom uh, and, and formerly the CEO. And I'm, I'm very happy with the panel I've, I've lucked into. Uh, these are some industry experts I've known for a very long time. Uh, we have a representative of a solutions provider. We have a representative of a Fortune 500 enterprise and we have a leading analyst. So I'll let them introduce themselves in just a minute. I just quickly want to give an overview of the panel because uh, I know the title which I came up with and put on these 1997 slide templates is uh, a little bit cliche. But, but for purposes of this panel, what we're going to be talking about is an evolution from the, the production of individual pieces of content, as many of us used to do, into driving corporate communications and training initiatives, marketing initiatives, and having the systems in place to manage those initiatives. Uh, the term might be content management, it could be information management, it can be media management. Um, you know, it, it brings those content producers into a whole new world, and, and the strategy is not just what these people want to get done, uh, what they're doing for their organization, but the strategy also comes into how are you going to get that done? Uh, thinking about a place like Wells Fargo, it's a complex political environment, it's a complex IT environment. How exactly do you figure out how to get that done? So with that, um, certainly we want this to be an interactive session. We know it's late in the afternoon. We know we're the only thing standing between you and some beers uh, at the reception. So if you have a question, raise your hand and uh, we'll entertain it. Uh, really quickly, a uh, little bit out of order, but Russ, why don't we start with you? Sure. Hi, I'm Russ Sack. I actually sat closest, so with the last name like Zach, I usually go last, but now I go first. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm the managing director of the Enterprise Video Group at Kaltura. Kaltura is a video platform company. Uh, we are uniquely divided into three major businesses. Uh, we do work in the media and entertainment industry, uh, in higher education with universities, and then as well with enterprises, and that's the group uh, that I run. So I'll be talking mostly from the vendor supplier perspective today, talking about the use cases that we see often in the or with the organizations that we work with uh, in terms of what types of use cases they're implementing and how we're seeing the trends as well as the solutions um, uh, be executed across the industry. Thanks, Ross. Patty? to align the communication strategies with the technology strategies. That's my main job, and that's what my team does um, at Wells Fargo Video Network. Thanks, Steve. I'm Steve Vonderhaar. I'm a senior analyst with Wayne House Research. I've been tracking the uh, enterprise streaming video sector for a little more than a decade, uh, uh, watching companies like Accordant and Kaltura uh, develop over the years. and. Uh, uh, seen the evolution of, of uh, uh, enterprise streaming, uh, streaming video platforms. As a matter of fact, right now we are in the midst of the uh, most rapid changes that we're seeing in terms of the development and the activities of the vendors involved in the space. Uh, uh, compared with what has happened the, the 10 years prior, uh, probably the past year has been uh, uh, the most exciting in terms of the progress and the innovation that we're seeing within the marketplace. And uh, uh, it, it really is starting to deliver on, on it, when we talk about media management, Mike, it really start, is, is delivering on the vision that we've long had for enterprise video on a streaming basis. Not to have it be an island unto itself where video, you kind of go watch videos at one point in time and then you go off and do your work the rest of the day. 
what media management to me is the idea that media can become part of the overall business process, that it can become uh, uh, a regular part of day-to-day -day business communications. And so, you know, you really, uh, when, when you're looking at, and do you want me to go on, Mike? Or do yeah, you want, please. You, when, when you're looking at uh, 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 media management, I think the, the first step for all of us to do is to, instead of thinking about media management, Take, take a step back and instead think about your organizational priorities. What does your business try to get done on a daily basis? And then how can video be implemented to help you achieve those objectives? So in some cases, you're going to have an organization that's very training focused, very customer service oriented, a lot of touch. Your, your success depends upon having highly skilled people interacting with your customers and prospects. In that type of situation, you want to be looking at a media management system that first and foremost integrates and exchanges information with a learning management system, keeping track of how training is implemented and, and how information is distributed to your workforce. So you're identifying your communications objective when, when determining what to do in terms of media management. Uh, conversely, if your organization is more sales focused, you've got to you know, move those prospects through the sales chain your first and leading objective in terms of managing your media is making sure that they can integrate with customer management solutions like Salesforce.com. So if a, if a prospect watches a video, how does that information get transferred in Salesforce.com? And how is that information tracked throughout your system so that you can uh, convert that viewership of streaming video into a piece of information that leads to a greater sale? So really, Mike, you, you have a situation where uh, it's a Rorschach test when you're looking at management for media because it's, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, and I think that's a great high-level topography of, of what people should be considering. And now we can, I think, jump right into the trenches. Uh, if I could ask you, Patty, jump in, into a question. And, and I didn't mean for this question to sound ominous, but how did you find yourself here? Um, from where did you come? What kind of content were you producing? What triggered the event or, or, or gave you pause and, and caused you to say, we might need something more? Yeah. It was a little bit, uh, well, it was actually both. It was evolutionary as well as sort of event-driven. Um, I alluded to three banks before the video network uh, has been producing content for 30 years. And with each uh, merger and each evolution, it got a little bit easier to decide what to keep and what not to keep. But you still have some things that have to be kept as you go along. And, um, and being broadcasters first um, and all coming from local broadcasting or local television production, um, I have to say that we were the most miserable at keeping up with things. It was sticky note on a piece of tape or it was a china marker on, on the tape to figure out what it was that we had. Um, and so we have just an awful lot of content to manage. But the key driver that made me start really thinking about this was the decision to move to digital management, to, to have an asset, digital asset management and archive and sort of get off of the tape off the shelf so that we truly would have one repository where all our masters were and all of our uh, content assets um, resided. So I started thinking about, well, you know, if you've got this big bucket, how are you going to find stuff when you put it in there? And and in really thinking about how tough it is sometimes to get the producers of the content to even give you a, a, a common title for it or a description of what it is. And, you know, I, I was at a conference recently and they said, you remember the video about the guy that talked about the thing? You know, we, we get that stuff all the time. And, and it, it's like, well, a little more so I can help you find this thing. And I saw it really start to it was going to snowball. I could see, really see the snowball coming down the mountain to figure out how to do that. So that's what really moved us to start thinking about how are we going to find this stuff? How, if we're yep. going to put it into this storage system, how are we going to put it in there correctly so that we can get it out correctly? And then how are we going to share it across systems? And, and at the time, did you expressly own that problem? Or was that something where you went to other business units and said, do you have anything we can Well, leverage? it's, you know, it's, it's everybody's problem. Uh, but what we were found, finding out, we, had, we did do some research amongst other lines of business to see how, how are you cataloging your content? You, you have sales pieces or you have these certain things. 
And it was a wide range of things from Documentum to um, SharePoint sites to, you know, it just depended. What we have found that video assets are so orders of magnitude larger that they really require a, 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 a secure system and, a, and a, a specifically designed system that's large enough to hold them. So our decision then became, you know what, we're going to need to build the system for video but keep open the doors to find out what everybody's doing and see if there are things that we could leverage. But it very pretty, pretty quickly became that we were going to have to do a solution expressly for video. I think that segues pretty nicely to your province with um, helping companies deal with long-form content. I mean, from, from what you've seen in the marketplace, is there anything you want to add to either Steve's or Patty's responses? Uh, I, I think uh, on my end is, you know, Steve mentioned before, that we're seeing this massive, rapid adoption now, which is, in the last two years, you see changes that took 10 years beforehand. And a lot of that has to do with, A, the cloud, which is that organizations, even uh, especially enterprises, are getting much more comfortable with using <coughs> cloud-based solutions, even in a hybrid environment, keeping content stored locally, but the application is hosted. Um, being able to experiment and test because you can roll out software as a service, especially around your video initiatives. Um, and then you can adjust to change much more rapidly. I'll give an example is that earlier today, Accenture was giving a presentation. And uh, when they implemented Kaltura, was their onboarding was four months. Now, if you couldn't do that two years ago, uh, is get uh, 250 uh, 7,000 employees up and running on a, a video management platform that's hosted in the cloud. And not only that, but gave the tool, new types of tools to allow for 400% increase in terms of the amount of videos that were being created. That could not have happened in, uh, in the old world, and that's because of the rapid adoption and rapid rollout of these technologies. So that, and that's a, that's, a, that's a big area, which is not only as what Steve said, which is look at your business metrics, but look at the speed at which you can experiment, adjust, and change, because that's completely available to you as uh, individuals who are responsible for the implementation of video technologies. I think that brings us smoothly into the next question. And, and Pat, you already alluded to some of the problems you were trying to solve. Yeah. It sounded like... There were some organizational issues trying to catalog the information, but um, you know, I, I, this is open to the whole panel because you all have visibility into this. Uh, what are the problems that organizations are trying to solve? I mean, is it regulatory? Is there some risk mitigation? Is it you know, higher productivity? Why are they evaluating these systems? And I don't know if you want to supplement mm -hmm. uh, your original response. I, I can just a little bit, Mike, because it, you know, as, as we have done our due diligence across our, uh, the different lines of business at Wells Fargo, those needs really are different. Some do have legal hold requirements, so they do have legal requirements that they, that they have to answer. And, and ours um, in the video world is really just keeping up with all of our content and being able to reuse it. We're looking at um, concepts like inside-out media um, to reuse some of our content for our external customers to be able to view. And so how do we quickly and easily get to that instead of running up down the hall going, who's got that master? Um, it really has to do with being able to lay hands on quickly uh, the, the content that you have. So that was, that was uh, you know, our big thing was sharing and reusing content. Um, the tracking and reporting for us, not so much because we do that through the channel. Yep. How many people watched it on demand or watched it on the satellite or watched it, you know, or, or actually clicked the link or did, you know, whatever. Yep. So, so in, in that, that, that's, but our, our primary problem uh, for video was just keeping up with it. And when you say channel, do you mean like a business television channel? Mm -hmm. or is it, it could like be a, any, ch any channel or distribution channel, really. It could it. be email. It, okay. You know, we have a, a weekly email that we send out, and we aggregate a lot of content into that one thing. So you um, pull it off the network. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think the objectives can vary even within uh, between different executives within the same organization. You'll have some people who are evangelizing the use of video and want to spread it far and wide, be the Johnny Appleseed of video communications within an organization. Then you'll have other folks who uh, have, want to have absolutely nothing to do with it and want to minimize it as much as they possibly can, uh, particularly folks in the IT department who are sitting there with the, the veto. 
basically not recognizing the power of video communications and wanting to just stamp it out. And so when you start talking about what, what do you hope to achieve with a, with a new uh, media management system, sometimes people want to uh, deploy systems that keep video as much an, of an island as it can possibly be. You just deploy little videos that are maybe posted in a portal and never visited by anybody in the organization ever. So one of the things that you have to do when you're really in the, in the first stages of deployment, you got to really say, how are we going to use video and how are we going to make it relevant in day-to-day -day business communications? Is it going to be something that we just have to the side that is just something we can point to the saying that, oh, yeah, we do a little bit of webcasting over there? Or are you going to take a step back and say, what applications do we use most frequently within the organization? And then how can we embed video more actively within these particular software solutions that our people are using on a regular basis? How, we can, how can we make video a regular, uh, convenient data type that can be integrated in the communications process? And so uh, the decisions that you make in terms of how flexible your management system is, how um, adept it is in, in terms of facilitating the, the, the sprinkling of video in, in different uh, venues, uh, embedding it in different applications, is going to have a lot to say about how your organization ultimately winds up using video and how rapidly it's, ad it's adopted by your organization. I think those are excellent points. And, and Russ, I mean, we were in the same position as, as vendors, and I think part of the challenge is making sure people Make it recognize. Make sound like such a bad word. <laughs> I say it with caution. I'll run out of here before you have a chance to. No. Uh, um, you know, is, is really helping them articulate the strategy and, and measure the effectiveness of the strategy. And, and really, in, in some capacity, we all sell together to help this propagate through an organization. So to the extent you are working with organizations, working with them to articulate that, what are you seeing as the key drivers for adoption or the, or the key challenges? The... the I I understand what Steve's saying, which is take the most popular application inside your organization and put video in it. But because of the unique characteristics of video, you also have to look at the unique metrics you need to track it. So, you know, I have a great stat here. Uh, the VP of social media and online video at Salesforce.com, Jamie Greeny, states 7,500 videos per day is equal to 46 hyper-efficient sales reps. That's a pretty good stat. Um, and that's because they are specifically gauging the effectiveness of their video initiatives in terms of customer conversion. If, I, if someone watches a video, do they click on, I'm interested in salesforce.com, please have someone contact me. Now that's, that's an amazing metric because it's, it's exactly about the effectiveness of those videos within their organization. Um, and in many ways, you have to look at it from a business metrics perspective, right? I'm going to use video in my learning and training, so therefore my success metric is going to be I'm going to be able to onboard somebody instead of six months, which took me, which I had to do in the face-to-face -face normal training, to using to doing it in three months, right? And set those key key metrics and test them, um, and those are are very important because. You can, in this age of quote unquote big data, you can track those metrics with your system. You have all this robust information and it's important to pull it all together um, and regularly monitor it in order to make the, uh, a very quick change to what you need. So, so Russ, your um, use case or your example at Salesforce, and I think Steve, you spoke to it as well, goes to company culture and, and whether they're gonna drive or inhibit adoption um, Patty, I don't mean to put you on a spot because we didn't prepare for this question, but I'm curious, how would you describe the culture um, at Wells Fargo, and, and you know, how are you driving adoption, or is it wind in your sails? Well, is it, you mean video adoption overall? Video adoption, okay. and, and really, yeah. as you migrate into using more and more of the core infrastructure. Yeah, it's, well, it, it was, um, it, you know, it's, it's been a, mold, it's kind of a molding of the cultures or a melding of the cultures coming together. Uh, Wachovia was very video-centric culture and even before that, First Union. And Wells Fargo just really was not. They were very more um, line of business focused. Um, so there's a, as, as these new companies, this new company is coming together, we're really creating a new culture of that whole oneness of the company. And video is doing a great job in being able to, um, to, 
push that along and, and make people feel more connected. Um, we just turned our CEO on to town halls. We carry the town halls over on uh, the satellite. So um, we have 6,500 re um, receive sites for our satellite system, which is the second largest corporate network next to Walmart. So all of our stores, all of our locations have a place where they can go and just watch live events on the satellite. And that has been huge. Uh, we get a lot of really, really good um, feedback, a lot of questions. It drives a lot of engagement with the company. Um, and then we make those uh, pieces available on demand uh, so that people can get to them when they can. Because in a company of 280,000, again, you, you, you just have to communicate with them where they are and when they are. So that, that's been the video has helped us quite a bit, particularly in learning who our new leaders are as we've yep. gone through the years. Um, and the adoption has been, a, has been really fast. Um, and I think it's because we've had a strong foundation in it for ha easily half of the company. It's not hard. Yeah. And so it, it, there was a higher comfort level overall. When and, we, and your we title um, encompasses online communications generally. I mean, are you driving multiple different forms of communications, just not video communications? We are through internal communications. Okay. Um, internal commu communications group, which uh, Video Network is a part of, also includes editorial services, and, um, th and then there's a, a sort of a graphics group that, that um, assists with the, the look and feel. Um, and then we're very closely aligned with the brand group. And so we've created several channels that we can aggregate um, a lot of information into one place to go. We did a communications audit. First thing we asked was, how do you feel about the amount of communication that you get? I get too many emails. I get too, too much, you know, it's the things that you would normally expect. So we responded to that by creating a weekly email channel uh, called TeamLink. And so if your information is important but not urgent, your information gets into that and you have a link and you can drive people to it. And that's been very well adopted because we're trying to get to the needs of what we're learning within this new company. So it's not just video. It's, it's yep. email. It's uh, the, the team member portal, the web portal, um, the internal um, group that manages that is also part of internal communications. Good. So we were able to aggregate all of that quite well. Great. And, um, you know, as we get into the next question, I want to revisit Steve, a uh, point you made about SharePoint and, and an allusion to there are going to be the in, these incumbents in, in large organizations. And, you know, I want to ask you first, from, from your experience, do you see having those incumbents that probably solve a portion of the problem don't solve it perfectly, but do you see those as an advantage or a disadvantage um, as business units try to expand their management system uh, initiatives? Yeah, so uh, when they're looking at their video management, video uh, management. initiatives, uh, I think w whenever you ca – it's always a battle for mind share when you're looking for – uh, uh, getting video more widely integrated with an organization. So if an application like SharePoint already has usage and adoption within an organization and you can piggyback off that with your management system, you're, you're, you're starting off at the, at the 40 yard line. Uh, you're, you're way ahead of the game. Uh, because essentially you have the opportunity to say, you love this application that you're already using and by better management of video, we can make that application even better. Uh, and so whatever you can do to leverage whatever application is already being uh, ad adopted and embraced and widely used within your organization, if, if you can uh, uh, develop the APIs that, that have, your, have your management system exchange information on a, on a viable basis with other applications, uh, you you don't want to fight that application. You don't want as uh, as as an evangelist for a video management solution. You don't want to try to kick out SharePoint. You want to see how you you can uh, uh, embrace and extend, as the Microsoft yeah. folks used to say, uh, 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 the uh, your video management system into the Share SharePoint or, or other applications that are used on a legacy business, uh, basis behind the corporate network behind the corporate firewall. And Russ, Kaltura clearly has a strategy. Do you want to, I mean, talk about what you're seeing and, and maybe impart what, what that strategy sure. encompasses? Sure. You, you do see, as Steve said, some overflow functionality, right? You take SharePoint, for example, and you would take a video portal. They both have commenting features. 
to, and you have to make a decision about how you want to integrate that. Does comments stay in SharePoint or do they stay in the video portal right. side? Where do they get stored um, and how do they get moderated, for example? I think it's very important also to figure out what kind of line of business are you. Are you, a, are you going to let your users uh, beg forgiveness or do they always have to ask permission? Right. What was the quote you used before at, at lunch? With, uh, proceed uh, until apprehended. <laughs> proceed until apprehended. Is that the best line you've ever heard? Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, it's it's awesome. But that's the way that you should you can go about your the execution of your strategy, which is: um, Are you looking at an open innovation? Are you creating a new product where you need everybody's feedback? In that case, you can look at an approach that is beg forgiveness, meaning someone flags it, says this data is incorrect. We should not be making this available. Um, right? Or is it something that is very careful, very confidential, and you need to ask permission to publish any of that? And you need capabilities on both sides, no matter what. And you should look for that from a video platform solution, but also in terms of does your existing application that is, be, that is having video injected to it, into it also supply that kind of capability? And we see both regularly. Um, it really depends on the culture of the line of business as well as the organization itself. Yeah, I think your line of business comment is a great one because there are certainly parts of a business that generally don't even have to ask permission from IT. Uh, a marketing group might be able to do a subscription because that's just how they do business. They think of it in terms of an initiative that's going to run for six months and, and this is a great relationship. Um, just to add a little bit from my own experience, I mean, we predominantly focused on internally facing communications. And, and so typically integrated into a larger system like WebSphere or SharePoint simply because, I mean, that was the status quo. That was the vernacular everybody was using and everybody was comfortable with um, and, and added value to that existing landscape, which is not to say that's the only way to do it. And certainly, I think the line of business being nuanced and, and thinking about that very, very carefully should influence the strategy you, you choose because you could end up jumping through a lot of hoops and spending a lot of time doing work you didn't have to do. Yeah, um, I think one of the big concerns you got to be uh, on the lookout for when you're looking at management systems altogether is the idea of feature creep. One of the things you were talking about earlier, Russ, was the idea of, okay, analytics and viewership uh, metrics. Uh, uh, is that really part of, of management uh, per se? I mean, I, I don't have necessarily the answer to that, but it, it's, it's like, Anything of value that we throw into the video workflow process, we, we tend to just toss into the management uh, bundle. And um, uh, I think that there may be more, more room for distinction. This might, this might take us off a, a, on, onto a tangent where we may or may not want to go. But uh, uh, it, it's like the, the, the content management solution is the, is the catch-all for all, all challenges and, and uh, uh, issues that have to be addressed in the enterprise workflow. Whereas, uh, really, the idea of analytics could be broken out and segmented into its own product category or solution category almost, but I think a lot of us probably consider part of the, of the management solution overall. So in, in some cases, one of the, one of the challenges that, fa that we face in evaluating a management solution is identifying the tasks we expect that management solution to do. And right now mm -hmm. we're expecting the, uh, the management solution to do everything from soup to nuts, and I think it's time to start segmenting some of the tasks that are involved in the video workflow process. That's exactly where I'm living right now. Sorry, Sorry could but, you say that again? I said that's exactly where I'm living right now. Trying to consolidate or trying, no, trying to, to reverse out. engineer? Yeah, really trying to reverse engineer, trying to figure out, uh, because your question that you have up here is, um, you know, with the existing topography, our, we didn't really have a topography. So we're trying to figure out, you know, we, we had a little system that we could assign project numbers to, to a project, and then we went off and kind of did things and shot things and edited them and everything, and then we put a tape up on the wall that had that number on it. And there's just, there's so much more to that if you're if you're trying to get into you know following that end-to-end -end workflow what are the distribution channels that go off the other end and then how do you measure the effectiveness of it once they they go through those channels and mm -hmm. then you, you close that loop yeah. you know that's a, that's um that's something that I, I think particularly in a fast-paced environment with production is that's 
a lot of attention is not paid to that. You're worried about making video. You're not worried right. about producing right. or managing video. Right, managing video. And that's um, kind of, that's how I'm sitting here thinking, we need to be thinking about that. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, Russ brought up the question about line of business. It's something you want to think very, very carefully about and not, um, you know, just assume because it will work for one part of the business, it will work for another part of the business. Um, to your point, Steve, I think it's really how you frame the question. Uh, if you frame the question, how do we define success, and success is me getting my MBO at the end of the year, um, you might come to a different strategy than if it's how do I organize stored video. Uh, that's a, one's a technology question, one's a little bit more self-serving and may even be slightly more strategic because it gets you well into the solution side of the equation making a business impact. Again, I wouldn't say generalize and whatever one of us says is, is right. Uh, I just say it's something along the way you should be asking yourself. Yeah, exactly. My measure of success is we never lose another master or, or video asset. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, in, in training organizations, <laughs> it might be distinct or in corporate mm -hmm. communications or emergency response or marketing. So um, certainly in my own experience, that's something we've run into. Russ, I don't know if you wanted to add to that, just, um, you know, how, how you would, what would you put in the parentheses as far as what defines a solution? I mean, uh, I, I believe actually that the analytics stays outside um, from what we're seeing, like from what Steve said, which is video on its own, if, you wanna, if you're going to track it, then you should expect some level of analytics from your video vendor. But when you look at the holistic goals of the business, that's not going to be uh, sufficient, right? Is that then you look at a best of breed solution, like an Omniture or an existing BI system that will aggregate uh, data from a variety of different sources, images, clicks, document access, all of that. There's a company called Domo that does something that's similar as well. Um, but that's also an expectation that you should have from your vendor, which is that not only do they have some analytics information in their solution, but that they can export to your existing reporting system so that you can roll up all of your information in order to track it. Um, <clears throat> we haven't gone through you know, some other areas where I don't think sits in the management side, which is archiving. Um, which is, I don't need these active uh, assets. I need to go with IT in terms of what's our data backup solution in terms of archiving uh, uh, on that end. Um, you know, those are some of the areas that would sit outside the definition of the, of the management uh, component. And you can go through a long list of what sits inside. I think one area that um, some organizations don't take into consideration is that mobile also is equal to, video is also equal to an application. Um, we get a lot of, we've had a, multiple customers surprised that you can't upload easily right through a web browser on your smartphone, right? And there's an education that needs to take place there that the new devices that are coming into place and are being used across the organizations have different types of personalities. Um, and you need to look at whether that fits within what your expectation from your video management company is or is not inside. So. Please. I think there's a uh, really yeah. quickly just to restate the question. Um, I guess is what would you envision a digital asset management or media management system encompassing from a capabilities perspective, and how are they demarcated? And if, if you don't mind, can I jump in on that one, and we'll just pass it down the line. Uh, again, I think it's how you define the problem. Uh, if you're driving a training application. Uh, you're creating content just for training. You may want that system to have authentication. You may want to have the management component 
tracking. You may even want certification, testing, version control because you want to make sure you have access to the most up-to-date and it may have its own dedicated administrator. That being said, there are lots of versions where companies are creating thousands and thousands of pieces of content and they just need to offload it into a traditional system because they're not using that much of it. So I'm sure this answer will get built out and, and improved significantly as it makes its way down the line. But you know, again, I, I think what we can offer you as a panel is a diversity of, of responses. And, and you know, my perspective always came to it from productivity and, and what are you trying to do and, and how will you get there and, and generally, it is the content and the way in which it's consumed that drives productivity and that necessitates it's being protected and shared and, and tracked. That might be a vastly different use case from one you have in your organization. Um, you know, I can think of uh, in telecommunications or in um, aerospace where they're just creating thousands and thousands of pieces of content and they have more value almost being cataloged than they do being you know, live, live length and, and accessible. So, so the challenge for us is that you have these multiple use cases. You have content being produced for training, you have content that's being produced for marketing, you have content being produced for like users. So how does one system encompass all these use cases? And can I ask you guys have two different questions? So it's closely related. Sure. I, would, I can, I can. Just really quickly, and again, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll hand this over, but I, I would say there are great systems in place in organizations, and, and from our perspective, we didn't get into the business of media management to compete against Microsoft or IBM or a traditional digital asset management system. The content itself and the goals of the creators of that content necessitated a solution, whether we were going to develop one or not. I mean, our core competency was content production, content creation. And our customers came back and said, we, we can't solve this problem. So, you know, how do you search for and find a specific location within an hour and a half piece of content? It's distinct from pulling up an archived web page or a PDF or a training manual. And, and so kind of spawned from there. Um, but I don't want to monopolize this part, even though I'm very passionate about this, <laughs> this question. Um, and I'll just go down the line. For, oh, go, Patty. Okay. Yeah, I, because uh, I, get, I get where you're coming from because it really is multiple systems. It's, for us, it's a, a, it's a video management system that these are our assets and, our, and, and what we have. And we're in the business of creating these v different pieces of content. If we hand one piece of content off to the learning center, and they put that into a, a particular learning piece, then they measure that through the learning management system as to how many times it was looked at or, you know, did people pass the course, that kind of thing. We don't really get involved into, in that after we hand it off because we're a product provider for that person. Same thing with, with marketing. We, my, part of my team runs our digital signage uh, in Wells Fargo. And so there are metrics through that system but marketing takes that information that we provide to them out of the system and then they figure out if they've got a sales lift based on the signage that are in, in the stores and everything. So we, that was sort of the evolution of my team as a solutions provider. Um, we are looking at business intelligence uh, to maybe do some aggregation of measurement against things that we do, the links that we put in emails. People click on them, does it take them to the intranet portal or does it take them to a video, does it take them to an article, something like that. Then, and then using a business intelligence system to aggregate all of those results. But as far as the video asset management, we manage that as the delivery of a product to a group um, to use. Does that help? Can Russ, does yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I tend to think of uh, digital asset management uh, solution as something more that is an archive that stores the raw material of intellectual property uh, that can be archived and retained or, or retrieved at, at a later point. Video management, video workflow management is more about the whole uh, managing the whole process from content creation to content distribution and delivery. And some people put network management under that umbrella, some people put portalization under that umbrella. Uh, uh, there are so many steps from the, the words coming out of the person's mouth making a video to the uh, person watching it, but 
uh, that's all encompassed in, as I was talking about before, this you know, behemoth that's becoming the management software that makes that process all work in the middle. Uh, uh, the video management software is not so much about keeping track of that particular piece of content for its uh, intellectual property elements, but rather how it exists as a communications uh, piece uh, of, of uh, uh, just a communications mm -hmm. piece that can uh, be sent from one person to another. Distribution. Distribution. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just put my, my to conclude, uh, which is management should give you a sense of control. Right? That's the definition, right? If you're putting in a management system, it should make you feel okay that every day when you go to work, that in case something happens, you have control over those assets and you know what's going on. Right? That's, the, that's a key goal in terms of your strategy. Um, from a functional perspective, like you described, you should look at a system that does a broad base of all of those features and functions that you described. Upload, transcode, metadata management, uh, publishing, distribution, and tracking. But it should also allow for you to have plugins so that you can leverage your best of breed. Uh, right? Your video management system is not going to have beautiful editing capabilities. You're going to get that from a third party editing system, but it should have plugins between the two systems. Right? That's your manage, that's quote unquote your management system. Um, and if you worry every day about your management system and what it's going to do and that you don't, you have a lack of control, you may need to look at an upgrade or something different, right? But then at the end user application side, that's different, right? You mentioned the CMS system. The CMS serves web pages, right? Or you have a learning and training system. That's a separate system altogether. That's what your end users, your customers, whether internal or external, are using to access those videos and that data. And those are separate. Your management system, again, encompasses all of the components broad base and gives you a sense of control. That's, that's what I, our recommendations is for uh, when you look at your implementation. Yeah, I think, Russ, your point on, on plugging into yeah. third-party solutions, I mean, another way of looking at that, depending on how your organization is structured, and it's the exact same thing, just a different word is subordinate, which is, you know, you take an overarching system, one that has the most momentum. It could be a, a content management system. It could be an LMS. Um, and, and things port into that as sort of the central repository. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of different ways to approach it, and I'd say that's kind of why, for this panel, we, we chose the word strategy. Uh, you kind of have to pick your angle of attack, depending on, um, you know, how your organization's structured. Uh -oh. Far away. Hi. This question is for Tati. Uh, do you see uh, social media or user-generated content part of this, this strategy at all, or are you treating that as a separate animal, or you're not treating it at all? Well, that's a good question. We, we will be interacting with social media, and a lot of the offerings that we, that we do in internal communications have a social media component. Um, as far as tracking them, we're still kind of head-scratching about that. I'll, I'll just go ahead and admit, because we don't have, um, we have some strategies on how to incorporate everything from you know, a sort of a, a Facebook, internal Facebook kind of concept to ranking and sharing videos. Um, we're tossing all of that around and a lot of our products enable that. It was back to how do you tie them together, what system really is going to track that and where is it going to come out. Um, you know, I, I, my feeling is that particularly around user generated video, um, any time, in an, in, in an enterprise, there still is going to have to be some kind of moderate, moderating of that or some kind of governance around it just because of policy issues, legal issues, that type of thing. But I think if you dip your toe in carefully, and we have done that with our recent uh, town hall with user-generated questions uh, that came back and then we played them back as part of the broadcast itself. Um, that kind of begins to give an appetite that this can be used and it really will work and it really will uh, propel engagement, employee engagement particularly. And then I think we have to see, um, you know, because some of the tools that we have really give you the opportunity to, uh, for users to upload videos and have them moderated and published and, and that kind of thing. I don't, I don't think we're there yet, but a lot of other companies are. 
and I think we'll learn from them. As, as what, what's the business case for it? What, what's the real business case support for user-generated video and social? As we, and we've got groups that are sitting around thinking about that and, and really trying to answer those questions because that's what leadership wants to know. What's the business reason for doing this? How's it going to lift our sales? How's it, how's it going to benefit our customers externally? Does that help? Did that answer it? Yeah, just to add, um, from our perspective, we saw a lot of pressure to emulate the user-generated video portal experience. I mean, that was almost the soft rollout for an enterprise was to, can we present the content in a certain way and maybe let uh, content consumers add comments? Uh, but, but to Patty's point, I mean, the rollout, the leash is really short at first, mm -hmm. and it rolls out slowly. And um, I, I, okay. Yeah, and I, I think you have a great point, which is that in the age of Web 2.0, is that it's no longer distribution, meaning you send it out and, oh, no, I have no more control over it. But it's much more of a role of syndication, which is that at any point you're in the constantly connected world, you're connected to that system in case there is an issue. You can allow people, right, lengthen the leash, yep. because you know that with, because of the, that the systems are constantly connected, you can make a change instantaneously, take down... Um, allow people to be to moderate that information in real time. So at least you can look at having um, a more confidence in and uh, not be as worried about experimentation with social media. So I like, Steve, I like everything I, like I learned about user-generated video, I learned mm -hmm. from you, so I hope you'll weigh in on No, I, I tend to think of, of social media as, as uh, uh, outsourced content management. Uh, instead of relying on the uh, sophistication of software developers and, and uh, uh, application developers, uh, essentially we rely on the wisdom of the crowds to tell us uh, which, which particular uh, uh, piece of content uh, is most relevant for people to watch. Now you have to have good social media software written around that so that that, that information can bubble up, but in, in essence it's just changing the responsibility of who's going to be driving uh, what content uh, bubbles to the surface. Uh, is it uh, going to be the, the general consensus of, of the uh, organization as calculated or tabulated by the, the, the social media software? Or is it going to be the content management software itself that uses meta tags and uh, other identifiers to figure out which piece of content should be shipped to which person? So we've got about 10 minutes left, and I was going to jump into a relatively open-ended question. Yeah, question oh, and I was going to invite questions. I have a question for Patty. I work for the Google Ads at Management Company, so I'm interested in the side of like, do you have, is it a separate system for video, or is it integrated with other types of assets like YouTube? Right now it's a separate system for video. Uh, we, we do have an issue about where we're going to put images and documents and that type of thing. Yeah, good question. And currently, it is, it's for the video network um, users only, so that's editors and producers. And we're working on, um, just real quick, we, we actually wrote an end-to-end -end application to create and track and bill a project. Uh, we had a couple of different things. You, know, you can schedule appointments for it and assets and, you know, to, to do the work and that kind of thing. And we've had... Um, a couple of systems before that did some of that, but not all of it. So we wrote a thing. To be, uh, all the, yeah, basically it's a project management um, um, software. And then what we are planning to add to that is sort of a media asset management piece of it so that I can keep track of the assets and, and connect that somehow to Avid and, and to Omnion. What we want to do is have the system generate, when I create a project, it generates the folder structure for Avid and tosses it out there so it forces um, the, the compliance to keeping, keeping everything in the right place. And then you know if things go into Omnion or if they're going to be on Avid or if they go someplace else or if, if it's a document or a graphics and it's, it's Scala or it's wherever it is. That's sort of my end hope. Um, but currently there's not, um, there's not anybody that uses that except video network folks. Um, I'd like to see an end state where you could search and find out if there was a video asset and who to contact to get it. I don't think we will ever get to the point just because of the network uh, and the, um, uh, the rights 
to the video and who owns it and that kind of thing that, that we could just go, oh, here it is and here's a little proxy of it and you can decide whether you're going to use it or not. I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we do that. It'll be a partnership with marketing or whoever, but they would come back to Video Network for that asset. Welcome. Any other questions at this time? Okay, Steve, I was going to start with you again. An open-ended question. You get to interact with a lot of big companies. You, you guide them in, in sort of best practices. I mean, are, are there any cautionary tales? Are there any best practices, things learned you'd want to impart in a couple minutes? Uh, well, the, uh, the the biggest thing that, that we've learned from, from all organizations is that adoption of streaming video is an incremental process. You can't expect to go from zero to 60 overnight. And so that's why we see the evolution of the marketplace today in terms of the rise of hybrid and hosted solutions that blend the capabilities of both hosted uh, data center offerings with uh, on-premise uh, behind the firewall applications into an integrated solution uh, really sets the stage for uh, a, a, a new era of growth in terms of enterprise streaming adoption because uh, in, in the past it's been a, a situation where organizations really had to make a, in some cases a seven-figure bet that video was going to have an impact on their organization. And uh, uh, people uh, just uh, still, even today, are not that accustomed to uh, integrating video into the day-to-day -day business communications experience. So asking them to make that huge up, up, upfront investment really requires them to take a leap of faith. Whereas now when you see the emergence of hosted solutions and hybrid solutions, Companies can begin uh, adopting these capabilities on an incremental basis. And when people see video in action, the light bulb goes off over the head and they say, hey, I can use this to communicate my own messages on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the, the, the adoption of the technology becomes seeded over time. So really in terms of best practices, uh, the idea of making sure you walk before you run, uh, 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 incrementally adopt, find what works, iterate, and move on to better applications is the best way to go. That's great advice. So even if you think you feel pressure to have widespread propagation of video and widespread adoption, do it slowly, do it methodically, do uh, it correctly uh, kind of you, advice? If you, if you roll it out too fast, you just fail on a grander scale. <laughs> it's a good way to get budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think that's been, I think that's been the story all day long, and, and these sessions has been, you know, you want, you want everything to be a success, <clears throat> And adoption takes a long time, particularly in a large organization. You know, you got to get leaders involved and, and, and all of that. Um, a cautionary tale that I would um, share is to, as, as you're going through this, to expect delays. It, it's complicated. This is doing this type of strategy and really getting down to deciding I'm going to manage my content, I'm going to know where it is, I'm going to, um, I'm going to tag it, I'm going to um, organize it and catalog it. It's, it's hard. And, and it takes time. And so uh, for, for us, it's going to be a multi-year project to implement this because we've got the systems in, in different states of commissioning and getting going and figuring out, you know, exactly what, what do we want to do. Adoption among the producers, as I mentioned earlier, is tough. Um, and so you just, you just have to get, grow a lot of patience. Um, and then another thing that I would say is as, as we were going along and we are talking uh, just a few minutes ago, we're building a system for video. Uh, we, that was a decision that we consciously made to say, all right, we're not going to try to boil the ocean here. We're just we're going to do this for video, and we're going to reach out to the other groups that have content to manage. And what we've kind of done is put together an informal community of practice, which is led by uh, the person on my team that manages um, metadata and media asset management and, and the whole um, strategy development for that. And so we've got a community of practice and we're kind of looking for future integration or uh, points of, of um, integration that we could come to and, and work together. But you just, you just can't do it now because if you do, there's that grand scale again. Yeah. <laughs> Russ? So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to just add to what Patty said, which is it's about the team um, and you have to look at the makeup of the team um, that is doing the implementation, you need a, a librarian, someone who understands media asset management. Uh, two, you need a video expert, somebody who understands the nuances of video. Video is unlike any other media type out there, period. And 
three is that video is now IT centric and collaboration centric. centric. It causes a lot of craziness with your network. So you need somebody who's an expert also in the IT collaboration space. And from our experience, the best project implementations have gone when there is a makeup of the team that, are, that goes across those areas. Video person can say, oh, I don't believe you, vendor. You know, you're, the stuff you're telling me about the video is incorrect. The librarian knows how to, you want to manage it from an organization perspective. And the IT person is understanding what is it going to do to the capacity of my network in terms of when this gets deployed. And that's, those are very, very key to have in terms of your team um, from a best practice perspective. That's exactly the makeup of my yeah. team, exactly. So you're, you're advocating build consensus, build support, build momentum, bring in subject matter experts and, and get it. Well, I think your core team, like what Steve said, is you, know, you can walk before you run. The, in today's day and age of technology, you can start small and then roll it out. But your core team shouldn't be you know, uh, people on the periphery. The, the team needs to be, to own it, all need to have those backgrounds. Yeah. So it's your expert team, it's your tiger team, it's a team that's together for a year or so. But it needs to be someone who's dedicated. These people need to be dedicated to this. Question. I would add to that uh, a UI person. Someone yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Experience. User interface yeah. is um, yeah. a suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, as I introduce them, this is a fantastic panel. I hope you have some questions for them. You can get Steve's advice at no charge. Good questions on throughout. <laughs> I really appreciate your. Please. Okay, the question was um, web integration and how uh, video plays a part in um, uh, and how you manage that asset along with the whole web structure. Is that yeah, get you there? Management. Yeah, and the web content management. Um, currently, the way we're doing it is video really is a separate piece. Uh, we, we send out a link and we're doing... Um, on-demand video right now. So you're, you, you go someplace and you read an article and there's, you see the video, here's the link, or you know you get sent a link or you, a, a piece of content is pushed to you and a little pop-up comes up and you click on it and you play, play the content. Uh, we're moving to more of an embed and a portal type um, um, model because that's what our lines of business need. And so we're upgrading um, our, our current software with our video on-demand vendor so that we'll have those capabilities. So there'll be a portal, there'll be embed code or a widget basically that you can uh, embed that because we have several lines of business. Um, we're moving to a, com you may find this interesting, we can talk a little more offline about it, but we're moving to a concept where we've got a common portal structure for the whole company. That has not been the case up until now. So everybody will have, they go to this one destination. But if you're in a particular line of business, you will have real estate on that page that is specifically for your line of business and takes you into that portal. Uh, we'll be able to give video, um, in, embed video into that or in, they go into their portal and it's embedded in their portal. So that's definitely um, a user-driven uh, request that, that we will be doing. But that video still comes from the distribution channel. We'll still be tracking it in the, um, the video on demand delivery system that we use. That metric will still come out of that of who watched it um, when they watched it, that whole thing. So that's where we'll be using business intelligence to get that. And that's where it kind of falls apart with the web model, right? Because we're not really, we're not using the click-throughs necessarily. We're really more interested in, in who watched it 
and when in the line of business that, that that person is in. And so what we want to do is sweep that information into a business intelligence sort of environment so that we can also look at did, did they get to it through a click in an email or was it through the embedded video or did they, because we, we communicate our, our video assets a lot of different ways because there's so many people, you need to get them where they are and that's why we do it. Does that help? Yeah. We can talk more. So I think we're out of time. Um, I wanted to thank the panel first. I thought they did an excellent job. Thank you.